Hey everyone, all the amazing people here with an amazing gentleman, a great person, a very kind and he's like the CEO of Pitch Ground, Mr. Udin. Great to have you brother. Uh, thank you so much Achai for having me. Yeah. And I'm super excited for your talk also today. Like probably tomorrow we'll have your this thing like speech at Engage. And uh, what will be the three piece of advice which you want to tell to all the audience from your years of experience in software and all this stuff? I think my first piece of advice would be um, build a lean team. That's very important. Don't try to rush into hiring ever. Uh, that's very important and start automating everything and that's the only way you can build a lean team so that's the first advice that I would give you uh, give to everyone uh, the second the second piece of advice that I would give to everyone is start delegating uh, if you want to grow as an entrepreneur if you want to grow your business you need to let go of the responsibilities and start delegating as soon as possible the sooner you do that the faster you would grow also accept the fact that you're not going to get like 100% the same output and the quality that you expect. So make sure that you grow along with your team. That's very important. And third is being persistent and staying determined because there will be bad times. There will be ups and downs, especially you're building. Whenever you're building any startup, uh, you have to motivate yourself. Don't fall into any sort of motivational videos or anything. Trust me, it will give you a dopamine for about six seconds. But after that, it will not work. So you have to constantly keep on telling yourself tomorrow will be better. And just focusing on small improvements every day. Because if you focus on that, you would grow a lot faster in your life. Absolutely. And one thing, uh, I see you like you provide so much of value. And even like recently, like you were telling me, with that one thing, I'm able to connect with you the most. Right? Like when it comes down to hiring, like team members come and go. And sometimes uh, it's like an uh, breakup, like it's like relationship. Even I also faced that challenge in my early days. Like uh, I believe one girl so much, and I was so much connected. Not like a relationship, like a team, right? And uh, one fine day she left me, and it was like I could not digest that emotionally. I was like so much strained out. How to overcome these situations as a founder? Because people come and go, right? How should we train our brain? So I think it's very important that not to really get involved your emotions. I know it's hard to say and hard to implement, but uh, being a four time founder, I can say that in this journey, I am very emotionless when it comes to this piece of aspect, because ultimately, look, people would join you because they want to learn from you. They want to take the next stepping stone ahead and they use this uh, as a method, as that step to move to the next step. We as an entrepreneur and especially founders have to accept that, that this is going to happen. If not in two years, three years, four years, five years, it will happen down the road, right? Because no one is bounded. There's no sort of commitment yeah. out there. So you have to make sure that you do not emotionally invest yourself so much that if something like this happens, you would sort of end up getting hurt to a point where it will start affecting your business. So always remember that, that whenever building team have emotions but at the same time do not invest too much into emotions we have to be prepared right like Correct. it's going to happen like you know like as soon as uh, in, in in western countries if you would have seen that as soon as you turn 18 the parents usually kick you out because <laughs> they, they they keep on saying hey go and get your own home start spending your own expenses or uh, get a job so it's the same way so everyone coming in your team, maybe except for your founders or co-founders or probably some of your founding team members, most people are going to use as a stepping stone to forward in your life and again that's completely okay because in case if you become a founder tomorrow, the same thing is going to happen with you, right? If, you're, if someone is watching who is probably doing a job right now, this is going to happen because this is how the nature of entrepreneurship really works and you've got to accept that and just keep moving forward. So and I have also seen like at Pitch Crown, like the work culture, it's like so amazing. I saw like your team members, like Minang, uh, you, everyone, like you were, I think two days back with Bali, like you all go to different vacations, like you all work and all. Yeah. When it comes down to uh, having good culture in a team, right, what it takes to have like great talent in team, like how do you attract like smart people? I think a lot of early stage um, interaction and a lot of early stage hiring really depends on the personality of the founder because the reason why people are joining you and your startup is because they want to learn so in order for you to constantly keep on attracting good talents what you really need to have a good charisma 
and something that you can give in the form of learning to these people that they can potentially use and go ahead and and um, move forward in the learning zone of the journey. Absolutely. And coming down to your core focus at Pitch Crown, like you have like so many softwares. I'm also a user of uh, Pitch Crown. I love it because as an Indian, everyone wants like a lifetime deal. No one wants to spend like every single month on like softwares. <coughs> I love it. And when it comes down to building a SaaS software, which is like so scalable and which is actually solving a real uh, time problem, what does it take to build like great, amazing softwares? Um, so software building has become a lot more easier than what it used to. But yet again, if you want to build an enterprise software, it takes a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and probably like years of sleepless night. Because building a software is one thing, but building a quality software is something very different. So, but at the same time, I would recommend that anyone starting out, uh, build an MVP. Uh, more than that, spend your ideology time. So I have a theory on ideology where I talk about how you should spend more and more and more time on your idea and see if people are ready to pay you on your idea. And once you once that happens, build a small MVP, use no code tool, it's completely okay. Because when you're building MVP, you want to make sure that you're not spending more than a month of time on building MVP. So even with Pitchground, right, the entire MVP was built in a less than a month of time. Because again, the goal initially was not to build something spectacular. The goal was to test the idea. Once your idea is totally tested, then you can go ahead and start investing pretty aggressively on building up your own tech. So, but then again, uh, during your MVP stage, focus on your customer so much that you truly start understanding what you really want to build because there is a difference between building a nice to have a feature and a must to have a feature. And people do not pay for nice to have features. People pay for must to have features. So identify those by talking to your customers and not by Googling, not by going on forums because your customers are the ones paying the bills. So you need to interact with them as much as possible to get the insights because not only you would grow that way, but also at the same time, you would be able to retain them, which is again, a very expensive affair today, right? Because customer acquisition costs is constantly going up. So that's the recommendation I would give in terms of the that was incredible and when it comes down to effective partnership i see like even you partner up with so many software companies like you negotiate sometimes the deals don't go well and like sometimes they do something wrong or something and you also tell like apologize everyone like please don't use this software or like they harm you in some way or the other way like how can we identify these type of uh, partnership before it happens itself from your real time experience so i think uh, that's a that's a great question but to be very honest with you this can only be identified on the basis of certain data and that data collection takes time. So for example, if I'm meeting a person for the very first time and it's a brand new company, I wouldn't know how to deal with it no matter the number of experiences you have. You can probably take better decisions than someone who is a first time founder just starting out, but yet you would not really know the patterns out there. So when you start speaking with those sort of people, now after running PitchGround for over three and a half years, we have certain same patterns that people who are failing, founders who are failing, have a very similar trait in them. And the founders who are really succeeding have a very similar trait. And now what we are doing is, on the basis of that data, we have started internally analyzing everything. And then on the basis of that analysis, we take a decision that whether we want to move forward or not. Just to give you a very small example. Uh, let's say that if we send out an email to any of the SaaS founder, we're already interacting, right? Yeah. But if it takes longer than two weeks to reply, we drop them right away. Okay. Because if someone where a platform like us is trying to help them to make money and sell and distribute further, it's like a if they're going to win they win win take two weeks to just respond to us, yeah. imagine they are probably going to make a nightmare of a situation for our customers. So no matter the quality of the product at that stage, we drop them. So this year, very recently, we have introduced a concept of 3 P that the, the 3P philosophy that we have adopted inside Pitchground and we aggressively work on it, which stands for product, people, and pricing, and in the exact same format. So for example, the first thing that we look at is the product. If the product is really good, we test the founders on these parameters, right? One of the parameters which I just told you, which was an email reply, as simple as email reply. Then after we onboard them, we give them a huge checklist to complete. And we give them a timeline. If they don't complete those checklists in the timeline, right? it's, it's not something like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. These are things like, hey, add a knowledge base on your footer. 
These are the, those basic things that are really required for you to start setting up the website in the right way because ultimately your website is your store. So those things and if the founders are not completing those, we start finding those traits that this is going to happen in the future as well. So on the basis of those traits, then we figure out the people before the pre-launch. Right. Because all of our contracts are usually signed two months, three months prior or maybe like a month and a half prior. So it's usually quite ahead of time. And then finally it comes down to the pricing, right? So if a founder comes and say, hey, I want to sell this for $5,000, $10,000, we tell them, please go and sell yourself, right? We're not going to be involved. We know what our community wants. And more than that, this is the community that would be involved in your journey. You have set these up are, some principles. Yeah, so these are not people who are just going to buy the product, use it and right like not even interact these people are passionate users we love our users because more than they supporting us they love new softwares <laughs> right they are crazy about new softwares because these are the people who want to do better in their life so they invest in software to try and ensure that they remain lean look not everyone wants to become a unicorn not everyone wants to become a 10 20 50 100 million dollar company some people are very happy making 30 40 thousand dollars a year they're very happy with that for them, the way they have been able to do that is because they've built such a lean team by implementing right software. So for them, it's very important that pricing is very sensitive. So that's why like, we focus on the pricing and if the founders say like, hey, no to this pricing now, we don't launch them anymore. So it's a very intensive process uh, of, of a series of evaluation that goes through. And on top of that, we now also have a community-based uh, evaluation, which means after we have done the evaluation, it goes to the pitch ground community. Okay. So we have a special bunch of our very active users uh, who buy software a lot and they're just crazy passionate about software. You take a poll It goes them. into that community now. Okay. And if they approve it, it goes live. So wow. this is something that we have implemented about two months ago because again, we had about three and a half years of data because again, a lot of times we, it's, it's just very difficult to make decisions unless until you have that data. So on the basis of that, now, we have started seeing some great founders coming in, great product, great pricing at pitch round. So this is what we're going to continue doing. And as we keep on accumulating more data, one year, two years down the road, this will keep on getting better. But again, there is no way we, we will have 100% success. Because ultimately, these are startups, right? So there can be a dispute with the founders after a year, right? There can be some other dispute, right? Someone could get into some legal issues. We don't know that. Right. So those are the third party external factors which is not in our control, which is not in our hand. So in those cases, again, there is going to be those uh, those uh, those positive errors that's going to happen. But then again, your, like anyone's job, if they're buying the software, is to make sure that they end up using the software so much that they still end up saving massively and end up either saving the time or make money using those particular software. Absolutely. It was phenomenal. And I believe like the pitch crown, the main USP is like the community, right? And no, definitely. Like, it, 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 I think we love our users. Uh, what and the kind of love and support that they gave us is phenomenal. And I think without them, we wouldn't be even, we, uh, we wouldn't even exist, right? We wouldn't have remained bootstrapped for three and a half years. So at round, like I, I would 100% say like product and everything aside, it's, it's our community, it's the users. We're constantly talking about you, you being a part of that community yeah. at the same time, you supporting pitch ground, but more than supporting pitch ground, you're actually supporting the SaaS founders and SaaS companies. And I think that's that's what our core USP is and no one can replicate that. Absolutely. That's what my team member Shiraj always tells. Hey, this is a new software. Like you want to check out, this is a Facebook ad. Like it will tell us what to do. I'm like, I'm going to get it, right? It's like a lifetime deal. Absolutely. And uh, like, how can people find about you and uh, if they want to learn more about like Pitch Crown or like your community, how can they join or like connect with you as well? Uh, so you can join uh, our community. So just head to our website, you will be able to join our community. But if you want to follow me, I'm very active on Twitter, Instagram, uh, and sorry, not Instagram, but uh, LinkedIn. So just look for Odit Goenka on uh, Twitter or LinkedIn and you should be able to find me very, very good. Awesome, bro. And any last piece of advice you want to tell to all the audience who are watching this? Uh, keep going you know like it's it's a journey right uh, don't try to stress yourself so much on hitting targets that it starts affecting you your health your mental peace it's not worth it in the end so take it one one take one problem at a day no one is a superman no one is batman over here 
take one problem at a time and just solve it. Focus move on one on, thing, exactly, then the and then move on to the second one. So tiny progresses every day will yield you much better returns versus trying to do everything in just one day or just two days or just trying to do too many things at the same time. So focus is very critical and then going at a sustainable pace and being consistent is more important and that will heal you. Absolutely. Thank you so much bro for your great time. It was very Thank happy, so great to meet you. Thank you everyone for watching and do let me know what was your biggest takeaway in the comments. Have a great day everyone. Bye-bye.